Hey, Creature Designers. We have a very good one today. Uh, thanks to user VLRC for this awesome recommendation of three extinct animals to combine in order to form a crazy creature. So let's go down the list of actually what we're combining today because these things are probably animals you have not heard of. Top one up here, it's called the Cinemies. So the Cinemies is a very, very ancient turtle. It's from the early Cretaceous period. Um, it was found in China and Japan. So it's very well known over in that area. And then we have this beautiful dinosaur called the Bahadasaurus. Now the Bahadasaurus is also from the early Cretaceous period. And it was found in Northern Patagonia, Argentina. Last but not least, and this sucker is crazy. It's called the Bodaspis. So this thing, over 500 million years old, it's one of the first living things on earth. And it's also known as the Emperor of Trilobites. So that's a pretty awesome name. And um, I believe this thing was found in the Volkhov Ridge River region in Russia. So uh, those of you that speak Russian or are from Russia, please let me know if I am mispronouncing that. Volkhov, I believe that's right. All right, so. Why'd you come here? <laughs> We're gonna combine these. And I don't know what's going to happen. And I think that's the beautiful part of it. Now, there's not a lot of reference online, especially of the Cinemies and also the Bedaspis. Now there's quite a bit of the Bahadasaurus and ironically, the best reference that I could find online was from toys and not actual paintings or bones. So there, there are skeletons, but you know, I like to see this thing um, in the flesh. All right, let's get into it. Now, before, what I did was I just started drawing on the page like this. This thing is going to probably require a, a top-down view and not a direct top-down view, a front three-quarter top-down view, something that I can put some perspective lines in to help me with making sure that everything is, even though it's in organic shape, is in perspective. Here's how I would go about doing it. I would pretend that there is, here, let's just turn the sucker around so the words are gonna be backwards a little bit. I draw better from right to left, I'm right-handed. My, my hand just does not move correctly from left to right. All right, now I'm gonna turn it. Okay, so if you notice, the vanishing point is off way over here somewhere. That's okay. You don't want the vanishing point on the actual canvas showing up because then what that will do is that will force the perspective into a vanishing point and it will not look realistic. It will look like we're drawing from a hyper fisheye view lens and we don't want that. Okay, first things first. Now you remember in all the other creature design tutorials, we have to go through the primary shape. So let's go primary, I'm gonna write that down. Primary, secondary, and then tertiary. Okay, in layman's terms, big, medium, small. That's what it is. Okay, so it could be applied to big, medium, small in shapes, primary, secondary, tertiary colors, main color, medium color, small color. Uh, so you can go down the line and break everything up that you're gonna design into threes. So I love the silhouette of that Cinemies shell. I think it's awesome. It looks like something out of a movie. So let's go with that. Okay, so why don't we just draw an outline? Oh, also one more thing. So the perspective lines are not distracting too much. We're gonna make a new sketch layer and then we're gonna turn the perspective lines, the opacity way down, right about there. So I can still see it. And then we'll just call that lines. Get into the habit of naming your layers, by the way. Because sometimes when you render, you're going to have a bunch of different layers, over 30 or 40, and you're just going to be guessing which ones are which. Okay, and then we're going to call this layer sketch. So I know where it is. Okay. Now here's the fun part. Um, I think I'm going to sketch with a a different brush this time. I've been using the Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard. I believe I'm just gonna go with 
a brush that it's similar to the hard round brush, but it tapers in the end. And you can find that in uh, Photoshop. So let's test this out. Now this is a 300 DPI document. Uh, let's check the image real quick, the size. So the image size, 1024 by 576 pixels, 300 DPI. So it's gonna give you a pretty nice landscape view. You can blow it up a little bit if you want. Should fit any monitor, cell phone, YouTube thumbnail, etc. That's fine. So once we have that, um, let's test it out. Yep, that's fine. All right, let's go to town. Okay. That's the same brush, by the way. I just pointed this one. All right. Now, let's get that turtle shell-like thing in here. But I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I don't like how I started it, so I'm just going to start it over. Don't like that one at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think I like this brush. I'm gonna go with what I was using. There we go, I'm gonna make it pure black. Got it. Much better, okay. Oh yeah, let's start doing this creature. So I'm gonna put a curve on that. That, uh, that crazy looking, looks like a, a spike coming out of the shell and I'm gonna put another spike in there. Now. Look behind my drawing. You can see the the uh, perspective lines are in opacity of like, let's see, 21% so I can still see them. But this is gonna keep me in check because then I can make sure everything's in perspective. All right, so once we have that, uh, the other thing that I wanna do before I get into too many details, I wanna draw the center line slash backbone. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to help me find out what the middle of the actual shell is so that I know how the perspective is going to wrap around to the other side and how much to show of that shell. All right. Uh, now that I do this, I'm probably going to take that extra spike out. And I'm just going to have it more streamlined like this. Um, maybe we'll have a larger spike there and then this one will shrink. All right, there we go. Okay. Now I'm just throwing some shapes together, seeing what works. Remember, we don't want to just combine three animals and hope for the best. All right. We want to make this design our own thing. We're just using these images as reference, okay? So we're not gonna copy directly the spikes on the neck or the shell or the, the crazy trilobite shape. I mean, look at that thing. It looks like something out of a horror movie, which is awesome. All right, instead, we're going to use what is happening there and then we're going to bring it over into this design. I'm gonna shrink this a little bit, like so, just so I can see what's going on. So we have that. Um, I noticed something. See, you guys are getting first-hand knowledge of what it's like to keep screwing up on the design. <laughs> this is why it's always good to have backup layers so that you can think, all right? So one of the things that Feng Zhu always says is he loves seeing portfolios that have the thinking drawings in it, you know, the thumbnails that, that is literally your brain to paper. Okay, and the, the beauty of it is, as we're thinking about this design and what to put in it, we're figuring out what's working and what isn't. All right, so I'm gonna go back to my perspective line, uh, the layer, and I'm just gonna draw a center line. Oh, you know what? I just turned my other layers off. I don't wanna do that. I did not mean to do that. Okay, so we got that. Let's turn on the names. I did that in one swoop too, it's crazy what the, um, the pen will do, your stylus pen on a tablet. Okay, so let's go back to lines. Let's do that center line right here. There we go. Now let's go back to the sketch. Okay, and we see regular turtle legs up here. We see dinosaur legs here, a big body, and we also see a trilobite body. Now, one thing I do like about the trilobite body is the segmented 
shell on its back. Now we're getting into almost like the, a biomechanoid shape, which is kind of cool. Like this. Now, if you notice, this thing is pretty messy. All right, uh, there's a lot of scratch marks going on here. And that's fine because we're gonna take that and we're going to clean it up. Okay, so there, ultimately we're gonna make about three layers. All right, looks like there's two rows of this thing. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting in like a basic shape that I might wanna put in here. Not necessarily a final shape, but a basic shape. All right, so I'm not gonna give the head much thought right now, but I, I will probably give it uh, a, maybe a dinosaur-esque shape. Let's shrink this down a little bit. There we go, All right like that. So no matter how far down you shrink it, it still fits your perspective. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna give it more of a hunchback. And let's see what kind of shapes we can pull out of that, that neck. All right, so I noticed that even on the Vahadasaurus, despite the awesome looking, I guess, spikes coming out of the neck, it also has a hunchback. And I think that's important because not only does the Bahadasaurus have a hunchback, have a hunchback, but the Cinemese does too, even though it's a turtle and it's flat. So I think the hunchback is pretty prominent. So let's move it more towards the tail area and maybe add some more shell shape. I still like that spike coming out of the shell. I'm gonna curve it backwards and then maybe have some other ones swooping around here. There we go. Okay. So what is next? Let's do just a little bit of indication of some of these amazing appendages poking out from the bodacus. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of ways that we can incorporate them coming out of the side of the shell because then we can add in some really cool parts on the shell where they can grow out of. And that means what structure of the shell are those things actually poking from instead of just plopping them straight from the shell because I don't want to do that. Um, so like down here where it comes out of an area that looks like the fin, it could be this weird little protruding bone structure coming out. And then we, we notice like all these awesome looking spikes. Heck yeah, I'm all for spikes, but we can't just make it up. Okay. Let's pattern it. Let's make a big one. Let's make a smaller one. Let's make a big one. Let's make a smaller one. Uh, there's the big one here. There's a smaller one. Let's check the perspective. Let's make sure everything is okay. Let's flip it around and we can start drawing this way too. All right, the other thing that I wanna do is I wanna add a wispy tail in the back. That looks pretty wild. Man, that is, that's already looking crazy. Love it, love it. Okay, um, next thing, let's indicate what I want to do with that beak. Okay, so if the beak is here, it's like a turtle, but it isn't a turtle. All right, let's move the eyes really far forward and let's put a double set. All right, and now that we have that, let's give it a powerful jaw to counteract that, uh, that rather long snout. And then a belly. Now you're probably asking, wait a minute, are you gonna put legs on this thing? Um, no, I don't think that legs are gonna help it because in my mind, even though this thing could crawl on land and maybe could walk, it just screams aquatic. So I think I'm going to keep it as an aquatic creature. Okay, so let's, let's uh, look at the designs up here. So we have the cinemies, we have a, a pretty decent shell shape right here. 
Um, maybe we can indicate it on the other side, but we have to make sure perspective is okay. Uh, and then we have the Bahadasara. So obviously we kept the those crazy looking um, neck spikes. That is nuts. Also, I noticed one other thing before I go any further. Down the Bahadasaras, it looks like there's some spikes going all the way down the tail, which I think is going to help this design. So let's do that. And they're really tiny, and there's a lot of them. So we'll get into the, the more detailed aspect of it. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay, um, and then down here for the Bodaspis. So it looks like, and again, we don't want to copy directly. We want to take design cues and apply it to our own creature. Um, it looks like it has a couple coming out of the head. Okay, so this might be a good opportunity to have even a crazier looking head here. So let's let's take one of those, and instead of just having one come out of the head like the Bedaspus down here, let's curve it like this, and let's put a couple more little weird appendages coming out. Now look at the perspective, everyone. The line, the perspective line. Okay, I'm now I'm confident that I don't have to make anything up. I can just draw that on the other side and I know that it's following the perspective. Okay, that's the beauty of this thing. Uh, and we can do the same thing with that one. So here's a construction line right here going back into the vanishing point somewhere off in the distance. So if this thing's on the other side, you know, we'll do some perspective checking to make sure you don't show a lot of the crazy arm on that side. Now I think we're ready to put some more detail on this creature. So let's turn the opacity down on this. Uh, we can turn the lines off, turn the opacity down on the crazy creature. Uh, this thing's nuts. All right, we'll make a new layer and we're gonna call this one final. Now, oh wait, did I not spell that right? No, I did not, okay. It's vanol, don't want that. Okay, fun part. Whenever I do creatures, I always make sure that I put personality into the design first. Where do we see personality first in characters and creatures? Most often than not, it's the head, the face, the eyeballs especially. So what I like doing is I like finding a location of the eye and depending on where you move it on the head is going to determine what type of creature you're actually doing. Now, when it comes to aquatic creatures, at least the ones that we know of on Earth, most of the eyes are black, merciless, round eyes because all they want to do is eat and, and hunt and kill and, you know, live in murky, dark waters. So let's do that. I'm going to put a circle and I'm just going to start the eyeball off that way. And then I'm going to add another secondary eye. So the, the let's zoom in so I can show you what we're doing. Okay. The big eye is to see in the peripheral, okay? So it can see a lot around here. It can zoom in on the outside. It can check predators if they come up from behind. And then we have the secondary eye right here. The secondary eye could probably scout the floor of the ocean or whatever type of body of water is on the planet that it's from. Maybe it's not water. Maybe it's lakes of methane or some weird chemical that we have no idea exists yet. All right, so you got these two sets of eyes. So let's back out just a little bit. And we're going to take that shape of the head. And we're going to add in some lines here that have a little bit more love put into them. All right, so those of you that are starting out in drawing and or maybe you've been in art school for several years now, you've probably heard the terms line weight and line quality. Line weight is your ability to go from thick to thin in one stroke. <clears throat> Sorry. Line quality is how clean that line looks. If you can master both, 
you can show line weight and line quality, your sketches are gonna look so much better digitally and especially pencil to paper. All right, so now that we have some basic shapes for this head, I'm just going to lightly sketch in some areas where I think some bony structures could exist for the skull. All right, so I, I'm i liking the head. I like the flattened, streamlined head because if you look here for the centimeters up here on the left, the you have your typical turtle beak, and we've seen these snapping turtles, sea turtles, you know, river turtles, tortoises. I do like that beak, and I think I'm going to give it a beak. I think it's going to benefit from it. All right, so that means that the bottom jaw is just gonna come right there. Now, this thing is turning into a tentacle. Now, I am i wasn't around 500 million years ago. I don't know what's going on with the bedaspus, what those things are, if it was used for mating rituals, if it was used for intimidation tactics, who knows? All I know is that it looks really cool and I want it on this creature that I'm drawing. So much so that I'm gonna borrow another location. So it has another set of horns right there. I'm gonna call them horns. I'm gonna put it right above the eye and I'm gonna combine those two areas. I'm gonna make that go back right like that. I'm gonna to go to the other side of the head and I'm just going to make this one jut out also. Let's check my perspective. Okay, so. It looks like there's a line, there's a line, there's a line, and my perspective is a little off. So I'm going to go back to my final sketch and I'm just going to go up a little bit. That way, if I did a perspective line going back into that distance, it's pretty much, it's in the ballpark. Now that I'm looking at this creature with those two spikes on its head, it looks really silly and I don't like it. So I'm gonna take them off. All right. um, you're probably wondering like, you know, why do you, why do you keep taking things off that you just drew? Well, you are your own art director also when you're doing stuff like this. And there are some things that I'm noticing now that are just not working with the design. One, I don't think a beak will work now. And second thought, I believe that it's going to be much more mysterious if we keep it different, okay? Beaks and talons, feathers, bird-like, dog-like, human-like structures for the creatures, that it, it's a scapegoat. It's like, it's an easy way out, okay? If, if It's hard to design a creature from scratch and design shapes that nobody has ever seen before because somebody has made it. But what you can do is you can put a spin on what does exist. All right, so we have that Bodaspis right there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put like a couple bony knobs, maybe in the front of the head. Let's check the perspective, cause I don't, okay. So I'm gonna have to make sure to go back like that. And then we can do that fun I'm just gonna call it like a mustache and we can do it on the other side. Cause these, these bony ridges will just go up the forehead. There we go. Now, when you look at this thing, it looks, it looks way more original than just putting a turtle beak on it. And that's, that's ultimately what you want. All right. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna do, and this is something with adding personality into your creatures, is I'm just going to color in the eyeball pure black like this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just eye drop the white of the canvas and I'm gonna put an indication of some shine in there. So it looks like some reflections are coming off the eye. This always adds like a, a cool, creepy, yes, but also specifically for this creature, a very aquatic feel. So I'm just gonna change my brush again back to what I was using. By the way, um, I'm sketching with the Kyle Ultimate Pencil Hard. That is, comes default in Photoshop. Uh, let me show you all the general brushes. You go into dry media 
and it's the first one in dry media. So I have the newer Photoshop. I don't know what you guys are using. If you're using Procreate, if you're using something else, uh, you know, Corel Painter, all those programs have wonderful sketching options, okay? Photoshop is like, they've always been behind the times when it comes to good pencil-like digital brushes. Okay, That's why I prefer just a regular pencil on a paper. But digitally, they've had a hard time doing it. I don't know why. But anyway, there we go. Um, let's check some perspective. Oh, wait, wrong color. It has to be black so we can get some uh, graphite looking strokes in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just putting a lot of energy around that head like this. And now I'm adding in bony landmarks. So what are bony landmarks? Let's, let's write that up here. Bony landmarks. Bony landmarks are areas of a body, and, and people have it too, where we can clearly see our skeletal structure underneath it your elbow. It doesn't matter if you straighten your arm out or if you bring it up to your, bring the hand up to your head. Just look at your elbow. The bones that are coming out of that area are bony landmarks. Look at your wrist. Okay, put your wrist out and you can see bones popping out. Same thing with your knuckles. Same thing with your collarbones. It also happens in the creatures that you design too. This is going to help make them incredibly believable, not only for your sake of designing a, a cool looking beast, but also the, the modeling department, because ultimately you want something uh, delivered to the modeling department that is very realistic, that they won't have to keep asking you questions on when it's time to model your own design. So let's take a step back. Oh, actually first, let's flip the canvas and we're gonna check the perspective. Okay, it's wrong. All right, uh, this is gonna be a little skinnier. So this is gonna pop out this way. It was too thick up there and I didn't want that. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda sketch that off into the distance, sketch this off into the distance. The end of the Bodaspis spikes are just pointy. I'm gonna change it up a little bit and I'm going to give it something cooler. So let's add this alien looking, almost like feelers at the end. Maybe they're leaf-like structures that can sense food, water current, scent, you name it. Maybe these are scent organs and it just, and it brings it up there. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so now that we got that, let's start moving down the rest of the body. And we already have a, a blueprint of what we want. Um, the, the crazy Bahadasaurus neck spikes, those are very important to have. So let's do that. Let's put in, and we're not gonna do as many, but we're gonna do quite a few. Okay, so let's add in, oh, and also, when I'm adding these in, I'm making sure that I'm not just randomly placing them coming out. You have to think about your creatures evolving in the environment, in, in their respective environments too. Like, when you look at nature, you look at all the patterns that come with their designs. For example, butterflies. Okay, all those awesome symmetrical patterns that are on the wings and the bodies and all the tropical insects, they evolved like that because of things that happened in the past where they were getting eaten, maybe they weren't finding the right things, maybe they couldn't mate as well, uh, they couldn't find a mate at all. And your creature that you're inventing maybe it had to do something similar in its evolution. I mean, think about the trilobite. Like, the Bedaspis evolved, and also the turtle. Okay, the turtle design hasn't changed much in hundreds of millions of years. Same thing with the shark, same thing with the alligator and crocodile. Those things are, they're perfect. They're perfect for their environment. They have never had to adapt, ever. The only, different, the only difference from the ancient alligators and crocodiles to now is just the size. They were massive. They were like the size of trucks and, and, and uh, semi-trucks. I mean, they were massive. So think about the movie Meg with the Megalodon, you know, the giant shark. Yeah, that thing's crazy. Okay, so uh, there are some patterns happening on the neck of the 
of the Bahadasaurus. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I, I can see my perspective line. Here, let me let me turn the opacity down just a little bit so it's not as distracting. I have it looks like I have two lines there. Okay, so let's combine those actually. Okay, so now let's go into the final sketch layer. And I'm just gonna make sure that these are also in perspective. Now you could add a little bit of chaos to these and maybe have one kind of poke off in another direction. That's fine. But you have to make sure that the base that they're growing out of is in perspective. So that means that this area right here has to follow perspective. Um, so, so it grows. Wait, what is happening with this? Oh, so it grows off the other side of the body in the same location. So then we know where it comes out of, of the body instead of just guessing like this. Okay. And then we'll do this. There we go. And then we have our it looks a look, pretty good start. Let's add in some more structure here because we noticed that on the Bedaspus, we have these really cool, almost like rib structures coming down. And I like that. I, I think that's one of the coolest aspects of it. So we're going to give some areas within the ribs where the spikes can come out. Okay. Primary, secondary, tertiary. Okay, this is the primary one. This is the secondary one. And then this one is the tertiary one, the three in the down there by the crack of the neck. Like that, I'm just gonna go back over the value shading in one direction. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn the canvas. I hit R for rotate, and I'm going to put in some value over here on the bulbous section of that of the head. I'm gonna turn it again and I'm going to shade on top of that again. And then I'm going to shade on top of that again at a third angle. So um, those of you that want some shading lessons with an actual pencil like graphite to paper, uh, I'm gonna show you where you can find that in a second at the end of my video here. But this is for shading on a digital canvas. You you can achieve some pretty good results digitally too. Okay, so let's zoom out to see that. Yeah, see, that looks pretty good. Um, we're going to take another large spike and we're going to have this one be the main, I'm not going to call it a fin, I'm going to call it a spike. Now, this one probably will be serrated only because I just get a sense that this thing is pretty deadly. It has to have an ability to protect itself from prey, or I'm sorry, from predators. And also, it has to be deadly enough that if it wants to kill, it has multiple ways of doing so. And what better way than to have serrated appendages like a steak knife where it can just drive into an enemy like this. So whenever you're sketching, doesn't matter traditionally or digitally, um, you can put a darker line underneath the body to give the illusion that there is a very dark shadow under there. And, and also what that does, it gives the illusion that your sketch is just more polished and finished looking. It's kind of like when fine artists paint a painting, they're, the actual brush strokes are super loose, but the edge of the figures and then the subject matter of their painting, the edge quality is very, very crisp. And when you have crisp edges and edges that look like time was spent into making them look good, it looks finished, polished, and more professional. So that's ultimately what you want to aim for. All right, so what I'm doing now 
is I'm just adding in uh, a couple more of those crazy head spikes. Let's take away the bottom layer and let's see this thing for what it is. Okay, I can live with that. That's kind of cool. So let's put the lines back just so we can see what's going on. Um, this part is going to be rather easy because all you have to do is uh, finish the the plating where these spikes are growing out of. So I'm going to add one more spike coming out here. It's going to be like a separate plating that these things are growing out of. Okay, here's perspective too. Um, one thing to make it look even better is to follow the ribbing all the way down the body. But you're going to make sure that those lines are very, very readable. Okay, now what I what I like that I did, and it was almost like a happy accident, is to put in a layer of, looks like sh shelling down the back of it. We're gonna add in those little spikes going down there. But what the shelling can do is is almost like the shell of the cinemies up here, of that turtle, because it looks sectioned and it looks deliberately designed like it's supposed to be there. And that's something that you definitely want. You wanna make sure that your designs look like they're supposed to have the things that they have. All right, so another cool trick that I've learned over the years is anytime that you have an appendage, like an antenna, uh, a tooth, a sharp spike, or a, something coming out of the creatures, that you darken the tip of it, and then you fade off the, the shading as you move down the shape. So what this does is it draws your eyes to the point and then it gradually grows into the body so that your eye flows right into the body design and then if you put in the time and effort to make sure the body looks good it's it's like good photography you know in the 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 rule of thirds okay you want to make sure that your eye can travel around the, the subject matter so here i'm just putting in some darker treatments on the uh, appendages poking out, I'm gonna call them neck spikes, right like that. It's it's nothing fancy. It's just an indication. Okay, same thing with the the uh, antenna here. I don't even know if I want to call that the antenna. I don't know what that is, but that's the fun part because this thing is not of Earth. I'm gonna put in some some really cool like maybe hairy tentacles down here, or maybe some hair grows on the, uh, the face. And now I'm just going to add in a little bit more value. So notice how I'm kind of jumping around the design. That's okay, because once you put a layer of value in here, like on the, the face of this creature, the background of it is set. So that means any shape that I put on here, any markings, the shading around it is already going to look good so that it's going to either look like skin texture, it could look like veins, um, and so on. So I'm just going to put in some more value for the head here. Right like that. Put in some shadow here. Uh, put in some shadow on the body right there, maybe where those crazy body ridges start growing off. Okay, so this is the point where I need to turn the canvas around. Um, now I'm right-handed and for me personally, some shapes are way more comfortable to draw if I, if I go from, if I start on the right and I move to the left. It's just the way my, my arm moves. Now I can go from left to right, but when it comes to certain shapes, can't do it. So in that case, I'm gonna finish off what I want to happen for the, the rest of the body down here. And I wanna make sure that I keep that awesome cinnamon spike. So I'm gonna stop it right there. And then I'm gonna add in the back of the shell here. So there's kind of like a jumbled mess going on right there. That's totally fine. That's the fun part. We're gonna figure out what to do with that. All right. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna combine those layers and then I'm gonna to start to erase the back.
back because I don't want all of that now. I could have kept it on its own layer and just erased it that way, but I accidentally started drawing on the other layer because I was so excited. And I realized, well, I can't turn that layer off without turning off half my creature design now. So I just combined them and now I'm erasing and cleaning up. That's just something you got to deal with. All right, got that part. I'm going to put in some darkness under there, maybe some veins coming up. Um, I'm going to put in some texture on the head. So I'll just put in some stippling, maybe some ridges where there's muscle on the forehead. All right, so now what we got is um, this is what I need to change. I just saw that. So I'm going to put in that backbone plating, and then I'm going to make sure that we have a centerpiece. What that centerpiece does is it allows me to keep things symmetrical where I need it symmetrical. I don't want to put the base of these things too far over. I'm also going to darken. See, I need to switch to the side because it's more comfortable if I add in value with my hand going in this direction. By the way, th that's one of the keys in making sure that your, your strokes actually look good all the time. And that is turn your hand or turn the canvas so that your hand doesn't have to move, but the canvas will allow you to draw in one single good direction all the time. So now, uh, let's see, we have one, two, three duplicated. We need to duplicate this one. So I'm gonna make sure that I follow that perspective. The one in the back, you can use some atmospheric perspective. Just make sure that it's lighter. Speaking of atmospheric perspective, I'm planning on doing a video, uh, well, a lesson, I guess you could say, where it's only atmospheric perspective, making sure that you're shading looks really good and then we'll we'll do that as we're designing creatures i think that'll be a lot of fun um you know comment below on the types of lessons that you would like me to give and i i'm going to be more than happy to do that for you there's a lot i want to say but i also can't make three to four hour long videos that's just not possible okay there we go, and then we have one more. So I can see the perspective line going in the distance that way. So now I know that this last spike is gonna end up right about there coming out of the body. And I'm just gonna lightly draw it. Remember, this, this phase of sketching, so the next detail level still doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do that. Okay, it's, it's all about refinement, refinement, refinement. One of the things that I did growing up and, and learning as I went about being an artist was that I just wanted to make sure everything was perfect the first time. And by doing so, I, I ignored thumbnail sketching, I ignored reference gathering, and I especially ignored uh, the art of refinement. So that means layer upon layer upon layer. When, when I was in college, my major was industrial design, and believe it or not, I drew cars all day. So I transitioned from vehicles to crazy creatures that eat you. But I, we, would, we would sketch on large pieces of paper. I mean, like biggie sketch pads, that's what they were called. And then we would just go to town. We would make sure that, that lines looked good. We made sure that we used paper where we could draw through it. So it was like graphics 360 paper, Letra set. Uh, pretty much all the marker paper was the best to use. Graphics 360 was great because it, it allowed us to do overlays and underlays of our drawings to make sure that like our designs kept looking better as we um, refined it. Then we picked a new piece of paper and we refined it and just so on and so on. Okay, so perspective again. This is where we really need to check it. Okay, so this, this is major, okay? We have to make sure that that will be in perspective. Also, that appendage, if you were to look at this creature straight on, okay, so here's the head. All right, there, there's the crazy spikes coming out of the, the head. There's a hunchback, there's a flat body. That appendage 
is growing outwards. It's not going straight back. That changes everything in the perspective. So you have to pay attention on the growth direction of your appendages whenever you're designing creatures. So that means that instead of just doing it straight back in perspective like that, I have to make sure that I, I follow this perspective line, but also put it in an angle because now there's, there's the good indication that it is growing outwards on the other side of the body. And I'm just going to indicate it. I'm not going to do anything detailed. I'm just going to put that in like that. And then I'm done. I don't want to mess with it anymore because I have these appendages up front here that are going to require more attention because those are in the foreground and things in the foreground are going to get more detail, etc. Okay, so like I, I'm going to darken those that are closest to us. Like so. So like that. I'm going to put some value in these. Notice how it, it's much harder to shade digitally, but I'm giving you a good way to do it here. And that is just keep it in one direction. Okay, so when you shade digitally, just make sure that your hand strokes stay close together. If you're using a hard round brush, I would, I would suggest using something with a little bit more texture because if you look at this brush blown up and you draw with it, look, look at the edges of the brush. When you draw on paper, the graphite has, it's almost like a, um, a dust effect. Like the edges of the stroke look like they're kind of bleeding off in the paper. I'm getting technical here, but it, this is why I like using this digital brush. The same thing can be said when you, when you shade, because it helps spread the graphite instead of just one solid um, black line. I'll even blacken those tips here, like so. Okay. All right, cool. So we can, we can put in some value here on the, the spike that's jutting outwards but not too much. That's on the side of the body. We're not gonna see it in perspective on the other side. Maybe, let's check that perspective, okay? So we, I, I see a line going back through my critter. Maybe it pokes out over there somewhere, but we have all these tendrils coming out and we're just not gonna see it. All right, so we're probably gonna see more of the back though, because I, I just now noticed something about that. Um, the body, I believe this will probably not be seen as much. So I'm gonna just turn it back like this. There we go, that looks better already. And I'm just gonna put some veins in here. And I'm just gonna start shading on top. So notice how I jump right back to the head. I'm putting, that, I'm putting in that, that personality again. Okay, all, like all the little veins and all the little things that grow near the head. Okay, let's add in some value on this. And then we'll just shade in one direction going up. And maybe we'll put some hairs on it. Maybe some crazy looking hairs. We'll darken the end of it like that. And then, yeah, that's about right. Okay, so last but not least, Let's just indicate a little bit cleaner version of the tail. I'm gonna turn my canvas because the lines are more comparable for me to make this way. Like so. Okay, let's spike those up. Now, if the spikes are really small, like the ones that I'm about to draw on the, the tail, then it's okay to use the hard round because the graphite, <laughs> graphite, the digital version of the stroke, it won't travel as much outwards. And that means it won't look as cruddy. All right, so this is what I mean. Watch this. I'm just gonna pick the hard round brush this time. So I'm gonna go to general. I'm just gonna pick hard round pressure. Let's see what happens. Yep, I'll use that one. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to the spikes like so. And then I'm just gonna start putting in some little spikes here and it's gonna travel all the way to the back. Now, another thing that helps with the realism, if you're gonna do a tail with spikes on it, is make sure that the spinal column travels down the center 
all the way down the tail. You notice that the spikes up here are on the top of the back. As I travel down the tail, you can see that the middle of it turns and then all of a sudden the spike is growing, the spikes are growing on top of this side of the tail. So you have to make sure that the spinal column turns with your critter. Always remember that. Let's have some fun with that, that end point. Like that. Now that can stay loose because I, I don't really care about showing a lot of that tail. It doesn't matter to my design, but you want to indicate that something is, is cool happening over there. Now I notice that there's, there's another thing that I need to do with the, the uh, side appendage here, like the arm. I need to darken those because it will give a better feel that it is in front of everything else. Okay. And again, I'll go into atmospheric perspective in a later episode when I can really dive into the details of it. All right. Okay. So let's see what we got. <laughs> that thing's crazy looking. It, I'm not going to lie. Um, perspective wise. Yeah. I'm going to indicate that thing up there just for fun. There's a lot going on on that back. So I'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible. Maybe put in some, some more little details here. Maybe some, a, a ridge going in the back, put some shadow here. There you have it guys and gals. This is the combination of the Cenomese, the Bahadasaurus and the Bodispus. Bodaspus, sorry. Uh, please comment below, give it a like if you like this kind of content and also in your comments, give a suggestion on what animals you would like me to combine next because as you can see here it doesn't matter what you choose the ancient extinct animals give a rather interesting perspective on things because we they're gone all we have is bones and we can make things as alien as looking as mean as demonic doesn't matter so give your combos below and let me know what you would like me to do and uh you know We'll see which one's the best one. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.